How do we see today the life of a medieval witch? Pointed caps, mouse feet potions, cobwebs, and witch burning, of course. But how did they really live? Check yourself. Do you have a chance to be burned alive in the Middle Ages? And who of the witches lived happily ever after doing what they loved? Now, meet Matt Bradbury. She doesn't have a pointed hat. She doesn't keep frogs kings and mandrake root at home, and even goes to church regularly. Nevertheless, she was condemned as a witch. She lives in the small village of Salem in the USA, which was founded by her ancestors. They were one of the first Puritan settlers from England. And we are in 1692. Old Salem was known for the strict puritanical moors. Our Mary seemed to have everything she wanted. She finally married her beloved fiancé. They got their own farm. The life was a wonderful fairy tale. But then something happened and turned her existence into a nightmare once and for all. Hellish stuff began to happen in the minister Paris's house. His daughter and niece got a frightening disease. Teenagers howled as if they were possessed, they bent in strange poses, and when the frightened minister read prayers, they covered their ears. According to them, they felt like someone was constantly stabbing them with a pin and a knife. But the worst thing is that the girls said that they were commanded by evil spirits on the orders of witches. All the residents were scared. Soon another got sick. It was 12-year-old Anne Putnam. They invited a doctor and he gave his diagnosis. The cause of the disease was a witch. Now the whole city went crazy and looked for her. The first suspect was minister's maid Tituba. The girls pointed at her. Tituba was arrested. But the number of girls with similar symptoms had already increased to seven. In addition, under pressure, the maid began to point at others, apparently to avoid punishment. Then the people of Salem understood. There is a conspiracy of many witches here. But how did they find witches among citizens? First of all, if you are a woman, then you are already under suspicion. As they believed in the Middle Ages, women were initially more sinful creatures than men and easily affected by dark forces. Of course, men were also accused of witchcraft, but statistics inexorably confirm that the absolute majority of those sentenced were women. Okay, but you can't blame everybody. Now, you could get under suspicion if you are rich and at the same time completely independent of any man. Wealthy, independent women were feared. No wonder almost 90% of those accused of witchcraft in New England between 1620 and 1721 were adult, successful, independent women who didn't have husbands, sons or brothers. But the poor ones also were suspected. So. Countrymen of our protagonist were one of the first who arrested the beggar Sara Good. The neighbors didn't really trust her, she was an easy target. You are a witch also if you have lived to an old age. However, being young couldn't save you from being accused of deals with the devil. The Sara Good's daughter, Dorothy Good, was only four years old when she confessed to witchcraft. Apparently, the poor girl just wanted to be closer to her mother. And of course, it wasn't the bad time for girls' nights. Girls shouldn't meet to chat and have a good time together. A group of women gathering without men could look like a devil-worshipping coven. Generally, at that time, it was better not to have friends at all. A sudden quarrel with one of them could cause a slander. In addition, witch hunters like Matthew Hopkins or John Stern terrified citizens so much that some women accused others of witchcraft 
just to protect themselves. You shouldn't have chosen a number of professions. Midwives were accused of compact with the devil especially often. The writer Joel Certain put it well. Social and marital status, independence, pagan influences, secret knowledge of herbs, everything counted against midwives. The main thing is that the profession was considered unclean and humiliating, so these women had to be in collusion with the devil. Besides, you are in mortal danger if you have too many children. This is the result of black magic, of course. Or if you have no children at all, that means the devil has cursed you. But the worst thing is to have an independent and reckless character. For any audacity, you could be called a witch. You are also a witch if you are ugly, or you have some kind of physical disability, or, on the contrary, if you are a real beauty. One of the inhabitants of medieval German Würzburg writes to his friend that the previous week the most beautiful and modest young girl had been burned in the city. They also looked for a so-called devil's seal, a small spot on the body of the person accused of witchcraft. It was the only spot where a person didn't feel pain at all. Therefore, they were always looking for it using painful tortures with pins or hot iron. But let's go back to Salem, where a real witch hunt took place. The most terrible thing happened. People seemed to go mad. The girls pointed at more and more witches. Those who went to prison incriminated themselves and other people under torture and pressure. The following facts eloquently testified against the accused ones. Sarah Good was a beggar. This was a sure sign, as we remember. Well, Sarah Osborne was a widow. Besides, oh no, no one of them had been seen in charge for a long time. Well, everything snowballed rather quickly. Three more women were arrested. One of them, Martha Corey, was arrested only because she initially didn't trust the testimony of the minister's daughter and niece, and treated the trial with mockery. That time, all arrested people were devotees and parishioners. Our Mary and everyone around were seriously frightened by the witch hunt that took place in Salem. And then, a 12-year-old Anne Putnam stated that she had seen a ghost of a priest who strangled and frightened her, and it had been George Burroughs. So, the distinguished pastor was declared the head of a coven. By that time, about 30 people were detained. They testified against him under torture. He was accused of organizing witches' sabbaths, causing damage to soldiers who suffered defeats from the Indians. All the residents were shocked. And then trouble came to Mary's house. The girls pointed at her, as if she had come to them in visions. The modest and charming Mary Bradbury was captured and thrown into prison. The prosecution claimed that this witch allegedly made milk sour, could turn into various animals and made women rebellious and disobedient. It's enough to die, actually. How did they prove that you are a witch? First of all, all the accused people, including our Mary, were carefully examined. Any mole could prove their secret connection with the devil. Then, witches had to be brutally tortured. According to medieval instructions, witches could withstand various tests for a long time with the help of the devil. The surest way to prove the guilt of a witch was to bind her and throw into the water. A witch doesn't drown, but if she does, well, she was an honest woman, fortunately, and would be justified posthumously. It was also prescribed to twist the joints of the subjects. Witches could set their joints without any difficulty. Suspects of witchcraft were tested with milk. If there was milk or butter next to a woman, 
and it turned sour soon. Then the suspect was certainly a witch. Of course, no one took into consideration the storage condition and expiration dates. In Salem, such a test was used as evidence of guilt. The blindfolded suspect was brought to the girls when they had seizures, and if they calmed down after a touch of that woman, she was definitely a witch. Mary, like an ordinary person, had several moles, and the girls also confirmed that she was a witch. Her fate was sealed, death by hanging. In fact, the Middle Ages was not an easy time for women. Bonfires burned all over Europe for almost four centuries. From the end of the 14th to the second half of the 18th century, and thousands of innocent people were sent to a terrible death after horrible tortures. Nevertheless, there were quite real witches who lived happily for a long time and at the same time continued to do what they loved. Someone was able to charm the inquisitors thanks to a female charm. Someone had noble patrons who needed their services. For example, the real legend, the voodoo queen, Marie Laveau, who lived in the early 19th century. Stories of her power were flying all over New Orleans. She was feared and worshipped. Of course, the local clergy hated her and tried to put her on trial several times, but her connections at the top of society saved her. Officials who came to the city necessarily came to her to pay their respects. She lived to be 87 years old, still practicing and inspiring fear and respect. In May 1692, the trial of the Salem witches began. Hundreds of neighbors stood up for our Mary Bradbury, but despite their testimony, she was also found guilty of witchcraft and sentenced to death as well as the poor pastor who said a prayer without hesitation before the execution. According to belief, a wizard couldn't do that. But it didn't help, he was hanged along with the sentenced people. Before our protagonist's execution, Sarah Good had to be executed, the beggar who was accused one of the first. With a noose around her neck, she promised the priest who participated in the trial, you are a liar, I am no more a witch than you are a wizard, and if you take away my life, God will give you blood to drink. The residents of Salem were terrified that this prediction came true. The priest Noise died from choking his own blood. What was the cause of the Salem tragedy? Scientists suspected mass poisoning of girls which caused hallucinations and Huntington's disease, which has the described symptoms and even encephalitis. Someone insisted that the girls were just lying. Today it is as difficult to solve this riddle as to answer the question, what caused the witch hunt in the Middle Ages? So, what caused the witchcraft panic that swept Europe and the New World? Researchers offer different versions. According to one of them, we have to blame the bread infected with ergot, which caused mass hallucinations. According to another version, it was a special time of encephalitis with hallucinations. The scientists blame even the weather. At the turn of the 16th 17th centuries, the Little Ice Age came to Europe and led to a deterioration of the climate. The cold snap brought epidemics, crop failures and famine, which were seen as the machinations of witches and wizards. But there is another version, witches actually existed. It was just that people mistook witches' sabbaths, ancient pagan rituals performed by women. After becoming Christians, people considered the ancient gods demons, but they still continued to worship them secretly. European peasants went to church on Sundays, and at the same time left saucers with milk or other offerings to the ancient deities to appease them. 
Even to this day, the church has failed to erase the belief in supernatural beings who were pagan gods ones, elves, dwarves, trolls, and fairies. Almost every community had at least one elderly woman, revered for her wisdom, her ability to predict happiness or look into the future, and her skills as a midwife. People consulted her in such cases as the weather and harvest, the livestock welfare, health and hygiene, sexuality, conception of a child and childbirth, but not the priest. Moreover, some scientists suppose that the witches who were persecuted by inquisitors were actually priestesses of the ancient pagan mother goddess, who was identified with mother nature. The worship of the great goddess goes back to the Stone Age. In 1984, the American psychiatrist James Bolland suggested that even now the great goddess, represented by archetypes of various Greek goddesses, is playing a leading role in the subconscious of a woman. But let's go back to our Mary, who was waiting for the execution in prison. Her young husband had collected a considerable sum of money with the help of his friends, and could bribe the guards and personally pulled Mary out of prison in a laundry basket. They went to another state and were horrified to find out what was going on in Salem. More than 200 people were already in prison on charge of collusion with the devil. 14 women and 5 men were hanged, an old man was crushed to death by stones, 5 people died in prison. The witch hunt spread outside of Salem. The girls even went to other towns to find those possessed by the devil there. But everything ended shortly when they pointed to the governor's wife. He immediately ordered to stop the persecution and cancel the trials. And a bit later, the victims were rehabilitated. The girls themselves didn't suffer in any way because of their actions. Fourteen years later, only one of them, and Putnam, wrote a penitential letter and claimed that she had been possessed by the devil and had slandered people. After the end of the witch hunt, Mary and her husband returned to Salem and lived in love and harmony. Mrs. Bradbury lived 85 years and died peacefully in her bed, surrounded by numerous grandchildren and great-grandchildren. By the way, she is a real embodiment of the idea of how many great people humanity has lost because of the witch hunt. Among Mary's descendants are the famous writer Bray Bradbury, astronaut Alan Shepard, actress Linda Hamilton, the Sarah Connor from the Terminator movie. But all of them might not have been born if not for their grand-grandfather, who had loved his young wife so much. But there is one thing. Mary's descendants were also one of the first American mediums, the Eddie brothers, who could hear spirits and enter trance. So maybe Mary Bradbury's story isn't as clean as we used to think. Do like and subscribe if you enjoyed this story. Oh, and click on the bell so you get notified when the new episode comes out.